Total worldwide cases are now above 82,000. And joining us to discuss the business impact is Oxbow Advisors managing partner Ted Oakley. Ted, I'm going to throw this one at you. I'm seeing a lot of people out there talking about shorting the market, shorting the VIX. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. Is that a good move uh, to make right now? Well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect them to short the VIX here. I mean, I, you know, I know it's had a run up and everything, but uh, typically, I think if you look back historically on that, you'd want to be up in the high in the mid to you know mid to low 30s before you'd want to do something like that. I mean, I know it's up around 30 today, uh, but that's not something we would look at doing. I think I think if you weren't prepared for this, now we were prepared, but uh, if you weren't prepared for this and you didn't have any liquidity. And I noticed the first two months, the last three or four months, really, uh, valuations very high, complacency extremely high. Nobody was worried about anything. And so that's probably increased the intensity in here. I'll make sure we mention Goldman Sachs is predicting that American companies will generate no earnings growth in 2020 as the virus is spreading beyond China. And AB InBev, for one, which of course is the biggest beer brewer in the world, cut its CEO's bonus while PayPal warned that the virus will have a negative impact on its revenue expectations. So, Ted, let me throw it over to you. Obviously, so many companies coming out and mentioning that coronavirus is going to hurt them in the short term. A lot of companies, you know, Nike, Under Armour, Puma, Adidas in the sports apparel world, just to name a few. Now, PayPal has said it will hurt them this quarter, but this Goldman report, and I saw another report as well, suggested that actually the hurt is likely to last beyond just Q1. Well, you know, uh, Dan, we thought we really thought uh, this year was going to be light anyway. I think we were one of the mm. few people that did not expect a 10 percent increase this year overall. I mean, if you looked at the December numbers, that's what people thought for 2020. And for us, we thought we would be lucky if we got two or three. So that did not surprise us that they would look for zero. Uh, and the other side is I think a lot of CEOs are are looking at that. If you look at this year, We've had an incredibly high number of CEOs that have left companies, the highest we've had in, in five or six years. So maybe they see the handwriting on the wall. I don't know. Uh, but I will say this. I don't think uh, we're I, I think we're out of the woods on the numbers yet, for sure. Let's talk about some of the data we've been getting. The American economy grew moderately at the end of 2019. The second read on fourth quarter GDP increased at an unrevised 2.1% annualized rate. Meanwhile, durable goods slipped 0.2% to tenths of 1% in January compared to the month prior. Now, economists polled by the Wall Street Journal were expecting a 1.5% drop. So, Ted, uh, how encouraging are, are these numbers? Well, not very encouraging for us because that fourth quarter number primarily had to do with uh, you know, with the import side. In other words, uh, you know, we didn't do it. The imports went up because the exports didn't, weren't as high. That's the only thing that moved the number. We thought the number would be more like a 170. And, and this year, we have no idea how the budget office is expecting a 3% move uh, in GDP since we hadn't had one in eight years. And so this year, we're in the single, we're in the single one digits all the way through. Uh, I, I don't see how they can come up with something that would be two and a half or three percent. So we've always been in that camp and and still are. I mean, you could get a, a very low count. You could get a zero count in the second quarter.